Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com and this is part 16 of our Learn Lightroom 5 series and in this episode I'm going to show you how you can make a dramatic black and white portrait and it's going to be a portrait of a horse not a person uh, because I went horseback riding yesterday and of course I took my camera with me and took some um, shots and I like this one um, because I like the wood and I'm going to show you how we could make this look um, really, really cool in black and white. Um, if you guys could do me a favor though, and if you could subscribe to my channel and share and like the videos, I'd really appreciate it. Okay, I'm going to process this photograph a um, little different than I do my landscapes. As most of you have watched my videos, know I, I bring highlights all the way down and shadows all the way up on landscapes. But this isn't a landscape and I'm not going to do that. What I want to do is I want to adjust the highlights and the shadows to bring out the wood um, the best I possibly can. And really it's kind of a hit and miss thing and you just kind of move it around. And also I want to bring out a little more detail in the horse's um, head. So I'm going to bring shadows, or I'm sorry, highlights up a little. Um, one of the consequences of bringing that up, you could start to see into a stall, and I really don't want, um, I don't want to see into the back of a stall. But that's okay. Um, I'll take care of that later. So when I bring shadows up, specifically, is you could see the start to see into the back of a stall. But I want his face to be better lit, so that's why I'm bringing the shadows up a little bit, and I'm bringing the highlights up a little bit too just to make the um, wood a little brighter because once I convert it to black and white and do what I'm going to do to it, it's going to get darker. I'm going to set the white and black point like I always do. I hold the Alt key in and when I uh, click on the white it turns black, screen turns black. I'm going to move it to the right until some white starts bleeding through. Very little though. And the blacks I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to click on it and go to the left until some blacks come through. And that came through a lot quicker. Um, I'm going to turn clarity up quite a bit because I'm not, I normally maybe I, I never go higher than maybe 35 on clarity, but in this case I'm going to go quite high because I really want to bring out this gnarly uh, wood and bring that up. Um, vibrance and saturation really don't matter because I am going to be converting this into a black and white. Um, it does to a point, like you got some yellow down in here and stuff. So if I brought saturation up, this when it converts to black and white, these tones, these gray tones, would be more uh, varied. So you could you could turn that up. It's not going to hurt anything. And I'm going to turn contrast up uh, quite a bit. Now it looks kind of horrible because I turned that saturation so high, but we're going to be converting it to black and white, but not quite yet. I'm going to finish. Uh, my processing as though I was doing color. I'm going to jump down to the detail panel. I'm going to zoom in on the horse here and I want to make him as sharp as possible. You'll see when I convert it to black and white why I'm doing this is I want it to be a real dramatic contrasty black and white and um, what I do with uh, the, if you look at I think episode 5 I do, uh, I go over these panels on sharpening and noise reduction um, what I do though generally is I look, I move the amount slider up until I see noise. And I could see noise in his bridle here. And then I'll bring it down a little bit. And the radius now, uh, I want this wood uh, to come out real dramatic. And so I'm more concerned about the radius slider um, bringing out the detail in the wood and it's going to be a little larger of a radius so I'm going to move it up to the about maybe 1.6 pixels and I could see some more detail come out and the detail slider itself I'm going to bring that up too because I want it to be a very dramatic uh, contrast sharpness so if you watch episode 5 I explain all that better I'm not even going to mess with noise reduction because this black and white picture that I'm going to be creating is going to be noisy by design and you'll see when I do it. So I'm done with the detail panel. I'm going to jump down to lens corrections and I'm going to take care of those right now. And um, chromatic aberration really doesn't matter but I'm going to click it anyway. 
Okay, go back up to my basic panel. There's a lot of different ways you could change a photograph into black and white using Lightroom. You could turn luminance or, or saturation all the way down. You could click this black and white here. You could go over to the HSL panel and click black and white here. It doesn't really matter. You could do it any way you want. I'm going to do it right here by clicking black and white. And now I have my black and white shot. Now there's uh, two things I want to do. I want to bring his face out a little more prominent and it just to drop off into blackness and then I want this wood to be real um, weathered and craggly looking. Is craggly a word? I'm not sure but if it is now because I just made it one. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the brush and I'm going to start on his face first. Um, you could double click on effect or hold the alt key in and effect turns into reset and you'll reset these sliders and I had to pause the video for a minute there. I was holding off a sneeze this entire video and I finally succumbed to the sneeze. So <laughs> anyways, we're back to the brush. Um, I want to bring out his face a little bit. And this is kind of a hit and miss thing. So what I want to do, I'm not going to mess with exposure or anything like that. I'm just going to bring contrast up a little bit. That'll make the between the white and the gray parts of his face more a little more dramatic and I'm just gonna leave that at that now I'm gonna paint the brush first and then I'm gonna go and adjust these sliders until I like what um, what has happened to his face so we're painting it on now you really don't see much of anything happening now I'm gonna go to the highlights and I'm just gonna move it around and see what it does and you can see I, that's the opposite of what I want there so I want I want it out a little more see it brings out these more subtle tones in his face and clarity just slide it around see what happens um, I like that to the right a little bit more that made a little more of his face stand out and um, that I don't know if shadows See, that's a little too much. Just a little bit. Yeah, like that. I like that. So that um, brush is now done for the horse's face. Now I'm going to work on this wood. So I'm going to get a new brush. You click right here on new. I'm going to double click effect to reset the brushes. Um, I want a humongous brush because I'm going to paint over the um, wood and it's easier to have a bigger brush. And I, the right bracket key will make the brush bigger. The left bracket key makes it smaller. Now you can see that's a double circle because there's feathering. I don't want any feathering. I want a, a just a hard brush. So I'm going to make it even bigger. And um, now to get this effect I want on the wood, I'm going to turn contrast all the way up. And I'm going to turn clarity all the way up. And I'm going to turn shadows all the way up. And then I'm just going to paint over this wood. See, see the effect I'm talking about? I gotta be careful down here. I don't want to get Mr. Horsey's face. Okay. Now, if you hover over the button, you'll get your overlay, and that shows where I painted. I really didn't miss any spots, so that's good. Now, I'm gonna do it again. Now, you could do it again if you have Lightroom 5.2 or later. Um, as, as of right now when I'm recording this they're up to 5.2 if you double click on this button there's a duplicate um, function there but for um, the say I want you to see me paint it on so I'm gonna double click on new and I'm going to leave the settings the same and I'll start from this end this time and I'm gonna paint it on again Okay. Now you see see the dramatic effect I did on on the wood. Now it you could pause at this instance now if you think it's a little bit too dramatic or you could adjust this one brush a little bit to make it look a slightly different or a little more of what your what's in your mind's eye or what you want it to look at. So I'm going to mess with the shadows and try bringing those moving those around. And um Maybe just to bring the shadows up just a touch and the highlights up just just a tiny bit. I want it like a real dramatic white and black look on that wood. And um, 
I think that's okay. Um, now the last thing I'm going to do is there you could see some of his stall still in the back so I'm going to get a new brush and I'm going to double click on effect to reset everything and all I want to do here now is bring exposure down and I'm going to get my brush smaller by hitting the left bracket key and then I'm just going to paint over these parts of his stall without hitting him that I'm going to leave this up here in the corner. That's a spider web. Um, and if I zoomed in, you'd notice that. So I kind of want that in there. So his um, body falls off into the blackness. And all you see is his face in this craggly wood. And um, then to finally finish off the shot, I'm going to go down to the effects. And I'm going to add a vignette like I normally do. Not, not that big of a vignette. Just a little bit of a vignette like that. Mm, not like that. Here I can dial it in. Minus 10. And oops. That's it. I think that's kind of the look I was going for. I might have this wood a little too dark once I added my vignette. So I could go back to my brushes and I could click on one of the two brushes I used. Um, for the wood and I could bring um, contrast down I think that will brighten it up a little bit yeah that's a little more what I want it was a little bit too um, over the top uh, a, a second ago it still is you know cons you know many would consider this a little bit too crazy but um, I tend to overdo things in this video. I make things oversaturated and I make things more because I'm afraid you can't see it in the video when you're watching it on the little YouTube screen or on your my we you're on my website watching it. So I tend to overindulge. Um, but everyone has their own taste. Some people might like this even more dramatic than I have it now. But that's you know that's your vision and that's how you should do it. Um, so that's it. That's how you can make a dramatic black and white portrait of, um, in this case, a horse, or anything you'd really like. Um, I just, uh, I did a um, black and white tutorial in one of the other episodes too, but it wasn't a very dramatic shot. It was just a how to convert something to black and white. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this, and this um, helps you guys really make some creative shots. Um, oh, I should hit the Y key, and you could see this is where we started and this is what we ended up with. So it's a real dramatic difference. And um, you could hit the backslash key also and you could do a before and after. So that's it. I really appreciate everyone watching and I appreciate everyone who has subscribed to my channel. I'm getting like 100 subscribers a day. It's it's amazing. Now if you haven't already, I'd appreciate if you did subscribe to the channel come over to the website and all that good stuff. I really appreciate it. Um, I got a lot of other videos. Uh, I'm way behind on my critiques. Uh, I appreciate everyone's patience. I'm going to be pumping those out um, quite in a lot in a row. And I'm going to be starting my um, Photoshop for Photographers series that um, as of recording this, I'm going to be doing that sometime within the next day for the first episode of that and that's going to be a beginner's guide to Photoshop starting out you never touch Photoshop in your life and this is how you're going to start out learning how to do Photoshop and that I foresee that one going on for like a hundred episodes and bring you up until you're uh, uh, an advanced expert in Photoshop and um, the um, other um, video series I have, uh, Adobe Photoshop Elements 11, I kind of paused for a while because they're coming out with Elements 12. And I didn't want to do a lot of videos on Elements 11 if it's not applicable to 12 anymore. So I haven't forgotten about it. I just got it a little bit on hold. And I'm seeing what they're doing in, uh, Adobe's doing in Elements 12. And then I'm going to come back and revisit Elements 11. And then ease, transition that into elements 12 too. So 
those are the video series I'm working on now. If you guys have any questions or anything, always email at tony at anthonymorganti.com. It might take me a day or two to get back to you. I get a lot of email, as you might imagine. But I always answer my email. So um, thanks. I'll talk to you guys soon.